Everybody, hope you remembered to put your clocks back last night. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Only because news reminded us. Yeah. <laughs> the news. Re news? Yeah. You know, what's but, news? I oh know, but I caught end of it. All oh, right. Um, yeah, it rained all night last night. And all morning, but it's stopped now. Um, interesting lady on this site, come all the way from Vietnam, um, and she's going to live in, a, she's got an RV, she's going to live in it, uh, had an right interesting chat with her this morning, so, hiya, if you're watching this, um, right, um, I got, I'm going back to my story, um, the last I got up to was um, Frank uh, telling me to regulate, ne these pianos needed regulating and uh, uh, I uh, taught myself to do that from these, this book I got from London, um, although I must admit over time I changed the way that I did it. Um, and then, of course, Frank being Frank, he wasn't satisfied with that. He um, he wanted, he said, all these pianos are low in pitch. They all need raising in pitch. Some of them you couldn't because the strings had snapped and you just couldn't pull them up to pitch. Uh, but what, some of the pianos were fairly decent and would tune to pitch. So he, he said you need to send off for this electronic thing um, which you can't tune a piano with it, but it, it showed me how to use it to raise the pitch of a piano. So I used this electronic gizmo to to raise the pitch of the pianos in in the shop. Um, some of them I got to pitch, and then when Frank came to tune them, he he could tune them to pitch. They were already there about but Frank being Frank he wasn't satisfied even with that he um, he'd come come one Monday as he usually did and he said come here you and um, he'd say now look listen and he'd put his thumb on a C put his thumb on an F that's middle C and an F and he'd play it play the two notes and there's a beat there there's a that's going wah, 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 wah. and he would say can you hear that beat going wah, 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 wah. no listen it's going wah, 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 wah. yeah right i can hear it yeah but i can also hear something else going wow 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 he'd say no that's an overtone you've got to ignore that more about that later the beat you're listening for is going wah, 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 wah. And then he would, he, he would teach me to listen to the beat. And as you raised it, it would go to nothing. It would go wah, 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 wah. And then as you went past pitch and went sharp, it would go, it would start going again. Wah, 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 wah. And he taught me uh, how to listen for a beat on a note and get it to zero so that it was in tune that one note but that's another thing what he was teaching me was here was if you played an F and a C together and you had to get that speed of that beat slightly sharp of the F and when you come to the G that had an, a speed the beat of a speed slightly flat then you go to the D from the G and all these all these notes had a, a beat that had to be a specific speed and that beat had to beat at that speed either slightly flat or slightly sharp of the note complicated isn't it because when a piano is in tune an acoustic piano I'm talking about when an acoustic piano is in tune, it's not. 
it's called octave stretching and when you tune a piano and you work down the bass the bass is slightly flat and when you go up the scale the, the treble is slightly sharp that is called octave stretching so a piano is not perfectly in tune an acoustic piano like a digital piano is there's no bits but a, an acoustic piano it, it is not perfectly in tune when it's in tune but it, these are very tiny amounts um, but anyway Frank taught me to listen to the beats and what the speed of all the beats should be and he taught me how to test them with fourths and fifths they all had their own beats bit speed beats as well and he taught me and all this took from learning to repair learning to regulate learning to tune about three years i reckon um and one day frank came into the shop to tune a piano and he said i don't need to touch it it's in tune I said, what? It's in tune? He said, yes. I said, you mean I can tune? He said, yes. I said, you mean I could go out there and tune a piano? He said, yes. Hmm. <laughs> then he's sent out of a job. <laughs> well, he wasn't bothered. Oh. Frank wasn't, it, I was no threat to Frank because Frank did it as a, a hobby, more or less. He, 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 he wasn't bothered. Um, in fact, the very first piano I tuned outside of the shop was at Bradford, Bradford Grammar School. And I asked Frank if he'd come and check it when I'd done it. Well, a grand, actually, that I did. But the same principle applies to a grand as it does to an upright. Just a different way of tuning it, but it's the same principle. Uh, the pins, are you're tuning it like that right, instead of like that. <laughs> Um, and he, he did, he came and he checked it and he said it was okay, it was fine. And so when I'd finished work in the shop, I started going out on an evening tuning. Um, yeah, and that is how I did an apprenticeship without knowing it. Yeah, um, and so we carried on. Um, that's that's how, how I did. I would tune all the pianos in the shop. I would set them up, which is regulate them, do any repairs, um, tune them and sell them. And at first I was still painting. But eventually I sent off for a book called The Secrets of Piano Construction, which was a very interesting book. Um, it was stenographed in New York, and it was a meeting. All the piano technicians, people involved in making piano string, in the felt for, for the hammers, the leather that goes into the pianos, the wood, what kind of wood they use for building the actions, um, lots and lots of things the wood for making the piano and and how the um the what the these what are they called that resonate in wood damn i can't remember the name they're like a little thing with a saucer on top when you get a magnifying glass on wood and you see these can't remember the name of them these are things that resonate in wood when you're playing a piano, um, the, all these these people who are involved in constructing pianos in America, they all came to this, well, over the, in the world, came to this uh, annual thing in New York, and they would talk about all sorts of things, the strike lines um, uh, of, of, a, of a piano, the, the way the um, way you constructed a sounding board and how... Uh, what the um, curvature of the soundboard should be, the poundage being applied to it, what they call down bearing, lots and lots of things. And I read this book on the secrets of piano structure and learned 
uh, a lot. And when I got started to get interested, that's when I started to rebuild. I started to deconstruct pianos and rebuild them. And um, even Pat got involved at that point uh, because uh, Melvin had a, a, a French polisher, um, Bill Green, in in the, the warehouse, and Pat went um, down to Bill. Oh, he he wasn't all fair with giving up his secrets too much, was he? No. He didn't really want to give up too many of his secrets, but he did basically teach Pat the fundamentals, and and he, he said that. She would make a French polisher because she had the patience to do it. And um, he said, you just need to go away and learn how to do it. Because most of what he learned was through experience anyway. Um, so Pat did. She got involved. I was taking these pianos apart and, um, and Pat got involved in French polish them. I'd do the repairs, I'd, I'd learn how to repair the veneer on pianos and using wax, this, this hard wax that you melt to, to repair damages. Uh, I learned how to fake grains um, to repair damage to a, the grain on the wood and all sorts of ways. Um, we really did get involved in, in pianos and that, that gradually the pianos took over from painting, stopped painting and I got totally obsessed, absolutely absorbed in uh, pianos and what were involved in it. Right, I think we'll end that video here. That's quite a lot. Okay, see you later. Look, um, yeah. we're still... At, at this point, we are still at the shop in Rodley. What, what was the Breadline Gallery is now the piano shop. We're there, we're still there um, until 1984. We're still there until 1984. This is about 1981 too, right? So we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. We are still at the piano shop. Okay.